One of the primary responsibilities of a swim teacher, other than safety and teaching the skills, is making sure that a student is in the appropriate level. The method by which we keep students organized and uh, keep track of their skills uh, is by using skill binders with skill sheets. Every instructor will have a skill binder in which they keep the skill sheets for each of their classes. Now even though the skill binder is assigned to you and has your name on it, it's not considered to be your property. So an instructor's skill binder can never leave tricks. It doesn't ever go home with you. They should always be kept here and they're always kept in the cloud closet. So at the end of every day, make sure you put your skill binder away where it belongs. There's uh, several important factors that go into keeping your skill binder up to date. And so every month we have a skill binder inspection done. And the skill binder inspection makes sure that every instructor is keeping up the skill sheets for every class so that we can track individual students progress. In order to understand how to properly keep up your binder, it is helpful to understand what we look for in the inspection. Each inspection gives up to four points for each class. The four points come from keeping a proper skill sheet for the class. So those proper things are, number one, a skill sheet that matches the class. In other words, it's the appropriate level. So if your class is a minnows class, it's a minnow skill sheet, not an otters or an intro, even though they have the same skills as minnows. Uh, you would have a minnow skill sheet. You would have the coach's name on it, the day uh, that the class is held. So if the class is on Tuesday, it would say Tuesday in the day spot. And the time of the class, which is uh, the time that the class is held, so 2 p.m. Um, class would be written 2 p.m. on the class that would, would be held at 2 p.m. You should also put the start date of your skill sheet in the in the sheet start date spot. This helps when we're inspecting to understand what the transition symbols are as we go through the skill sheets. So first is having a properly filled out skill sheet. Second is having the first and last names of every student in your class on the skill sheet. The next thing we look for is that you sent home all the numbers that were passed off in the previous month. We can tell if you did that because there will be the number of the month in which the skills were passed off inside the circle on the skill sheet or a number in the space that's allotted that coincides to that number on the skill sheet. The last thing that we look for is that you're also keeping track of skills in the current month. And we're going to go into more detail about how you do that each week with your classes so that each week you're tracking the skills that every student uh, does during class. So with all the factors that go into keeping up a skill binder, the question arises, when do you update your skill binder? When do you keep track of it? And the answer to that is that you continually do it. So each day that you come in for your shift to work, you're going to sit down at the computer or utilize your own personal device. You're going to look at the enrollment for each one of your classes and make sure that you update the first and last names of each student who belongs in your class on your skill sheet. Once your skill sheet fills up, then you're going to need to replace it with another skill sheet. And uh, when you do that, you should put your um, old skill sheet in the transition binder. That will allow us to get one last look at your old skill sheet um, uh, to be sure that it is completely uh, updated in the computer. Each day that you come in for your shift and you put in the first and last names of your student in the class, um, being careful to note uh, if you have a new student, if they've come from someone else's class, so that you can find their skills and update them on your skill sheet. Also, if you have a makeup in your class or a trial student, you're not sure if they're going to be an ongoing student in your class yet, so it's a good idea to simply put their name on the back side of the previous skill sheet, along with the information like the day's date and whether or not they're a makeup or a trial student. It starts with utilizing the lesson plan in conjunction with your skill sheets. 
after you've already updated your skill sheets at the beginning of your shift, you then take that week's lesson plan and compare it to the skills that your individual students will need. So as you're looking over the lesson plan, you're going to look for the skills that are in the lesson plan and compare them to the skills that are or are not passed off on your skill sheet. For instance, as we're looking at our skill sheet that says VIP week, we're going to look at the kicks and compare it to the kick skills accomplished during the week. So we have in our kicks section pass off skills such as tugboat, torpedo, and face dips. So you're going to look at and make note of those students who will need those skills. For students who have accomplished those skills, it's okay to work in a skill that perhaps they haven't accomplished yet, if it's appropriate for that uh, skill section. If not, then you'll have to find a way to work it in some way that will uh, make it flow with the class. And if you can't even do that, if the student has just one or two skills left, be sure that you work those in at some point during the class so that you're always giving every child an opportunity to work on skills that they need. When you look at the stroke section, we have windmill arms compared to our class here. All of our students can do that. Uh, and so you may want to work in a, a different skill or perhaps go quickly through that into the skills the child do need such as noodle swim or noodle swim the face in or forward swim five feet. You're going to do the same thing for every skill. Breath control, dolphin dive, and, and uh, uh, so you're going to look at here and find okay dolphin dive all of our students do need to work on that so we're going to be sure to include that in class. For VIP week it says otter kicks and we're seeing that otter kicks are a skill that all of our students have mastered, but they haven't all mastered floating by themselves. So we're going to probably do floating instead of otter kicks during uh, this section of our class for this particular group. And at the end, they're going to drop in the pool from the raft. And so we're going to check and compare that to our pass off and they all need to work on that skill so we'll definitely include that skill. That's important to do at the beginning of class so that you have already a heads up about what you're looking for for helping your students progress toward accomplishing skills that they may not have passed off yet. Alright, so another helpful tool that we have are these laminated skill sheets. The laminated skill sheets can be taken with you um, while you teach because they're waterproof. And we have what are called uh, China markers. Uh, they're uh, sometimes called grease pens. But they will write um, even on a wet uh, laminated skill sheet and you can write with them you know, even underwater. Uh, and so uh, then you take your students first and last initials transferred over to this laminated sheet because you're only going to use it temporarily um, for that class time and uh, you look over the lesson plan and for instance face dips are going to be included but all of our students already can do face dip so we're going to look at some of the other things like um, uh, torpedo swim and it looks like uh, Jack Brown here and uh, Susie Smith, they both need torpedo, but I can tell that Jill Jones has already passed it, so that's why I have that plus there. And you do that comparing each, and then you mark off on here. This helps you see which skills you're going to be working on um, from the lesson plan and paying attention to helping the students get skill progress from. Uh, so then we also see that windmill arms are on there. And I can tell by looking at my chart that all the students have already passed windmill arms. Uh, noodle swim face in is a skill that we're going to uh, be working on. So they have all passed those ones too. So it looks like the only skills left are um, the forward swim five feet. So we're going to make these lines. So you can see. I put use this code on the temporary sheet so it can I can quickly mark down the skills that they need to work on and uh, and then as they pass them I'll put the little plus in there I don't usually actually mark in the skills they've already accomplished so most of the time they're gonna look something 
a little more uh, like this. I might make a mark indicating if one or two of the students, but if they've all accomplished them, I might not put all the plus mark in like this. Most of the time you're going to see these type of marks on what I do for class. So then we also have dolphin dive, which every student needs to work on. And uh, every student has passed otter kicks, so rather than mark that off on here, I'm going to make the mark of the skill we're going to practice. So they, most of them need these two. Actually, they all need these two skill, head assist float and unassisted float. So now I have a pretty good outline. Oh, and drop into the pool from the raft. It looks like they all need this skill as well. So now I have a pretty good outline of just the basic skills I'm going to work on. But remember that these two work in conjunction. I can't just now forget about the lesson plan and just focus on these skills because that's going to be too monotonous. I have to remember the theme of the lesson plan being VIP and then do the the uh, uh, important uh, conceptual or theme week stuff but also keeping track of how they do on their skill performances here and then as I go through class I can mark if the student accomplishes the skill or not and just kind of be uh, you know mark it off oh yay they did it or they didn't now at the end of class after you've transferred these into your skill binder uh, you can clean this skill sheet by you this this laminated skill sheet you dry it first and then once it's dry then the uh, china marker just easily wipes off with a dry uh, tissue and then it's ready to go for the next person's use at the end of each class then you're going to take your skill binder out again and compare that to the skills that the students did during class Keeping track of students' skills is extra important because the skill sheets are the backbone of the program. They're the essential core of what it is we're teaching the students. Everything else is designed to do that with a tricks personality. So it is important to be evaluating skills at every class. Even though we only do a progress report once a month, it is important to remember that we're continually evaluating the skill proficiency of our students. So if a parent asks you, well, when are you going to evaluate my child um, for graduation? The real answer to that is that we're always evaluating them every class. And we evaluate them based upon the skill performances that they're doing over time. So in each class, you're going to evaluate the students as they do the skills and at the end of every class you're going to bring out your skill sheet and evaluate how a student does in class. For Jack Brown's forward swim, although he did have his head submerged, he also did the skill without help. He wasn't quite going the required five feet in order to pass the skill. His swim consistently was more like three feet that he did on his own without help. Also, Jack Brown's forward swim lacked the synchronized arm movement. Even though he did have consistent alternating kicks, his arm movement lacked the required uh, right and left uh, strokes that are required to consider this a pass for a forward swim. So we can't pass Jack Brown's forward swim for this lesson. Susie Smith doesn't hold back on her willingness to do the forward swim. However, her performance is inconsistent, uh, not always going the five feet that are required, and her coordination is inconsistent as well. So we can't pass Susie Smith on the forward swim for this lesson. Looking back on Jill Jones' forward swim performance, we see that she is just starting to get the concept of the forward swim. Although she is eager to now put her face in and is kicking and alternating her arms, she does not go the complete required five feet. And uh, although she can get plenty of encouragement, she cannot yet get the pass for this skill. Jill Jones is not quite ready to pass the forward swim. Reflecting back on the dolphin dive skill, I remember 
the requirements that I demonstrated for dolphin dive. And that is to have the head completely submerged underwater to make it under the bar at the point where the bar is set at the water's surface. And also to do the skill under my own power without help. Although Jill Jones is willing to do the dolphin dive with help and with help is able to make it under the bar at the setting where the bar is at the water surface, she is not able to accomplish the skill on her own. Specifically, she lacks the ability to move herself through the water underwater on her own. Thinking about Susie Smith's performance for the dolphin dive skill under the limbo bar, we see that she is able to submerge her head and make it under the bar at the setting where the bar is at the water's surface. Those requirements are significant and sufficient to pass her for the skill, as long as she can do that at least three times within one session. The fact that she also uses an underwater stroke and is moving her feet while she's going through the under the bar are additional skills that show her readiness to move forward. I would definitely pass Susie Smith for the dolphin dive skill. Although Jack Brown can occasionally make it under the limbo bar on his own at the setting where the bar is at the water's surface, a majority of his turns require assistance or when he does pick to do it on his own often he'll pick to go under the higher setting on the bar where the bar is set above the water surface. That means that Jack does not quite reach proficiency for this skill and so we will not pass him on the dolphin dive at this time. For floating, Jack is able to hold the correct floating position and maintain that position in a float for a full five second count while I am nearby and prepared to support him he is still doing the skill completely on his own. He has shown that he can do this skill consistently and does float on his own for the five counts at least three out of five tries. Although Jill Jones is in the proper back float position, she is still too hesitant to do the skill without me being in contact with her. Therefore, I cannot pass the unassisted float 5 seconds skill for Jill Jones at this time. Although Susie Smith is doing well with her back floats, she is just short of the required five seconds. You can see that I am lifting her up before I get all the way to the fifth second. That's mostly because I can see that the water level is getting close to her eyes which has in the past made her change positions and by changing positions she was taking water into her nose or mouth. In order to avoid having her take water into her nose and mouth and possibly causing her to regress on her float I have chosen instead to interrupt it where I see her body position has helped her be most successful. Although I am a part of the reason that she's not going the full five second count, I believe that it is the best judgment not to pass her on this skill at this time. When looking back on the drop in the pool from the raft skill, I remember that Susie Smith goes above and beyond and is able not only to drop into the pool on her own, but is willing to jump into the pool on her own and also initiate her own swim back to the steps. The fact that she can do this consistently and at least three out of five tries during class makes her a definite pass for the drop into the pool from the raft skill. When looking back on Jill Jones' performance of the drop into pool from raft skill, we see that she requires a lot of assistance and help in order to accomplish the skill. Although, on her very last attempt, she is willing and able to do the skill on her own, one success is not enough to pass her on the skill. Looking back on Jack Brown's 
performance for the drop in the pool from Raft's skill, we can see that he is never willing to do the skill completely on his own. Although we always offer the children a lot of encouragement during class and help encourage them to be independent and work toward their goal, we never frustrate them by holding the expectation that they're going to have to pass the skill every class. Instead, we encourage them to go from where they are to accomplishing some small step forward. The fact that he was willing to attempt the skill without holding my hand is showing some forward progress for Jack Brown, but we will not pass him at this time. Repeat this same process of evaluating skills after every class for every class every week, marking each accomplished skill with a circle in your skill binder. Once a month we have a progress report week. After each class during progress report week, mark all accomplished skills on a pass-off slip for each student and send it home with them. Then you mark each of those skills in your binder with the number representing the month that they were sent home. For instance, for the progress report week at the end of November, you're going to mark the skills sent home with an 11. If any of your students are absent for progress report week, be sure to give them their pass-off slip the next time you see them. Also remember to put the number of the month they were getting the report for. For example, if they missed the November report week, you still put an 11 in the empty circles representing those skills in your skill binder. Though you might be giving them the pass off slip in the first week of December. You're still going to mark that with an 11 for that pass off slip because it was for, no, for November. The whole cycle starts over the week after progress report week for each month during the year. If you keep track of your students progress weekly and send home progress reports monthly your skill binder will be up to date and you and your students will be on track. Ask your swim manager or trainer if you ever need assistance or have questions. Remember, have fun and keep up the good work.